Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop and in this video I'm showing you how to install my internal Sponson conversion kit. In this example I'll be using the Lehman Rusk from Games Workshop. It should be compatible with any kit where the wall thickness is between 1.5 and 2 millimeters. However, it might require a bit of extra work because you'll need to make sure that the weapon and the sponsons that you use are compatible as well. Now, I'll start off by saying that this kit really is for advanced users only because there is a fair bit of conversion work involved, but also because the resin parts are extremely fragile, such as this external frame. So if you're not careful, this can snap and break. So with those warnings out of the way, let's begin the first half we'll be looking at the Sponson conversion kit in detail and I'll be showing you all the parts up close and then the second half will be actually installing it into the Lehman Rust kit. If you want you can skip ahead to the installation phase, I'll put a timestamp down in the corner now if you want to jump to that point. So here is the internal Sponson kit. If you've seen my previous video, which I'll link in the top right hand corner, you can see the original version where I had scratch built it all from Plasticard. Now, if you would like to get your hands on a copy of this, you can buy it from beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop. The kit itself is comprised of six parts with three parts for the left hand side sponson and three parts for the right hand side sponson. So let's break down each piece individually. So the largest piece here is the body of the internal sponson with a small vision slit for the gunner as well as a circular mounting for your sponson of choice. Just on the outside you've got a small marking of L to signify that this is for the left hand sponson and there's a corresponding R on the right hand one just so it's really easy to install the right way round and there's no confusion about which part belongs to the left hand or the right hand sponson. This piece here is the gate which will need clipping off. You'll notice that the mold line runs along the back however these facings will not be visible because this will be inside the tank. So I designed the kit deliberately in a way to minimize the amount of mold lines that would be visible on the model and if you're interested in terms of size it's just over three centimeters it's 3.2 and around an inch and a quarter and in terms of the height it looks to be bang on two centimeters and just over three quarters of an inch the next part is the top to that internal section and you can see that there's a little lip which just allows this piece to be guided in quite easily and again you've got that same circular mount just so the sponson can fit securely inside between those two pieces and pivot freely these two little bits here will need clipping off as that's part of the casting gate but otherwise there's not much to say about this piece. Lastly we've got the external frame. The frame just hides the cutout that you'll make into your kit along with adding in some extra detail because you've got all these rivets that go all the way along the frame. Now as I said before the frame is really fragile and was the thing causing me the most problems in terms of learning to cast resin. You can see on the inside that there's a lip going all the way around which just hides that cutout that we'd be doing. If I flip it over to the other side you can see that there's a very tiny L just engraved here again just to let you know that this is for the left hand sponson. These little bits of resin on the outside and this little frame on the inside are just part of the casting gate which will need to be cleaned up very carefully before we begin the build. As I've said before this piece is very delicate because it is only one millimeter thick in most places. The right hand piece is similar but it is effectively a mirror image and you can just see that small engraving of R so that's a close-up look of all the frame components complete. Before we start doing the build proper, I'm going to show you how to clean up all the parts, removing those casting gates and any flashing. If you want to skip ahead to the build phase, I'll put a timestamp code down in the corner. In terms of cleaning up these parts, all you'll need is a good pair of clippers and a sharp knife. Now the clippers that I have are from Tamiya. When the tool is closed, you can see that it's got a really flush finish. Now this means I can clip much closer to the model without damaging any of the resin. Now if yours aren't like this you'll need to clip slightly further away and then go in and clean up carefully with a knife afterwards. So please bear that in mind when I'm doing this cleanup. The first thing we're going to clean up is these internal bodies. So let's just take the right hand side one and all I'm going to do is use the clippers just to take away this gate. And then we've got a tiny bit here just to clean up. Now this bit is a little bit more important because this needs to sit flush against the tank track. And then to clean up the back piece, 
just going to scrape the excess off and then you can just go in and sand this down a bit more. I'm just using a nail file. So with that one done, I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the left hand sponsum. Those two are now complete. And as you can see on the back, I've cleaned it up just enough but we don't need to worry too much about the back part because that's not visible from the outside of the tank. Next up, let's do the top part to the sponson. Again, we can just go in with the clippers just to take these edges off. And the only part of this model that's going to be visible is this top bit that's raised up. So we don't need to worry too much about how this lip looks. So those two pieces are now all cleaned up. We can then just put these to one side. So next up is the external frame. As I've said before, this is the most fragile part. So please be careful if you do damage the frame in any way. What I would suggest doing is just carry on with the cleanup and then install it. And then once this is glued in place, you can then go in with a filler and fix the crack or gap that you might have created. First up, let's flip it around to the back. And then what I'm going to do is just go in with the clippers and take off these long pieces. Then we can take off this internal section. Again, we don't want to go too close in because we can go in a little bit later to take those bits off. So now we're at this stage, there's a few different methods because I've got a really good flat edge clipper, I should just be able to carefully go in and take these off. And again, I'm just going to slowly chip away at these pieces. So to clean up these pieces on the outside, the best method I found is just to place it down on your cutting mat and very carefully with a sharp knife press down making sure that it's pointing away from the frame because you don't want to accidentally cut into it. Alternatively you can carefully just file away at these pieces. So after a few minutes I've now just cleaned up all of those external gates. Now I just need to work on the internal ones. The best method for removing the internal ones is probably to use an X-Acto saw blade. Now this one is from Games Workshop and you just need to very lightly just score down that external edge. Just applying a small amount of pressure. Just coming at it very slowly from both directions. And I think once I've taken enough off, I can just ping it off. With those little internal gates cut off, we can then just go back in, clean them up. So a good method for cleaning up these internal sections is just to use the edge of your cutting mat because you can then rest the lip against it and that means you're not putting any undue pressure on that lip. Just as I gently cut down to remove those parts and then we can go all the way around just being very careful not to cut too far down. So that has trimmed it up pretty well. What I would suggest is going in with a small file just to try and get these edges extra clean. So that external frame is now all nicely cleaned up with all of those gates removed. If we just look on the back, you can see how I've also done it here. It's important to note that the lip going all the way along here is quite clean. You don't want any lumps of resin in the way because this piece then won't be able to sit flush against the side of the tank. 
with the right hand piece done all that is left is the left hand piece now I'll go away and do this off camera just to speed things up that is both of those frames now all cleaned up and then this is how it should look from the back so that's all the parts cleaned up the next stage is to just give it a wash in warm soapy water and gently scrub it with a brush. This will help clean up any of the silicone release that might still be on the model and also just help remove some of those dust particles. Now if you want to see how that's done in more detail there's a link in the top right hand corner for you now which is part of my beginner's guide to resin. If I bring in the completed tracks from the Lehman Russ, you can get a good sense of how all the parts fit together. The Lehman Russ sponson itself can actually swivel around because that's not glued in place. And if I show you from the back, you can see how the body sticks out and will protrude into the Lehman Russ. So the essential step is cutting out this front plate as well as this back plate, which gives us the room for the sponson kit to sit through. The body sits behind while the face plate sits on the front and that will give you your complete sponson kit. If you're doing your conversion project for the Lehman Russ then this is the frame that you'll need. You'll need your two external track pieces and your two internal track pieces as well. I've cut out the four pieces that we need and I've just cleaned up all of those edges. We can put these two to one side for a second and just concentrate on one of these sides. And next up we need to cut out a hole large enough for the sponson. Now I'll give you the exact measurements of the hole that you'll need and as a guide where to measure from just so you can get the correct proportions. Feel free however to move it around to suit your taste if you want this sponson slightly further forwards or slightly further back. Just bear in mind how that's going to impact the internal structure. Now to give you an idea of the hole that we're going to create, I've already prepared one that I've partially scored out but I've not completely cut out. The first line is going to be parallel to this bar just here. So what we want is our ruler butted up against this piece here and then we need to make a mark two millimeters in until it's made that mark. Then we're going to do the exact same thing just slightly further down. So wiggle that about. So now we've got our initial marks that should both be two millimeters from this piece just here. So we can line up these two parts. Now the start of the line that we need to score is going to be parallel to this piece here. So I can just do another indentation just here. And then the length of this line is going to be 2.7 centimeters across. So I'll just make a little score mark there as well. So what I want to do is line up my ruler and then using the back of the blade you just want to gently score along. Now using the back it actually helps remove the plastic as opposed to just cut into. So if you do lots of small lines it will actually cut through the plastic much better than if you had the knife the regular way around. I'm just going to do an initial line and then just keep doing it. So that's the initial score line done. So just to reiterate that that line is two millimeters away from this bar just here. It starts in line with the edge here and is 2.7 centimeters all the way across. So let's do this line going down here. It's quite easy to work out because that's just going to be going straight down up until it lines up with this groove just here. So if you've got a set square, you can just mark that out quite easily. So using a set square, I can just line this up. So there's that next line. The line on the left hand side is slightly easier because we just need to line it up with these two points. Or again, you can use a set square. For this one, I'm not going to use a set square because you might not all have it. That's the left hand one scored in. And then lastly, we can just use a ruler to go across this point and at this point. If you're finding it's ever a bit too wobbly just doing it on this piece, you can just bring in that back part of the track and that will probably make it a bit more stable. And with this one, you want the knife to go into this slot here and then just make sure it also 
lines up with this piece just here. And now we've got our initial markings for the hole that we're going to cut out for the sponsons. Now we just need to carry on the process, lightly scoring along these lines using the back of the blade, and we will slowly cut through the whole piece. At this point it's still worth using a ruler just to help guide your cuts. But once it gets a bit deeper you can actually just freehand it because of the grooves will guide your blade. So after a fair few minutes I've now cut through creating this hole and this off cast piece. Now this piece here you can just throw that away. With the measurements for that hole fresh in your mind I would then go and replicate it on this piece. I'll score these up off camera and then just reiterate those measurements for you. So remember it is two millimeters down from this top edge down to the line. Then this line goes all the way down, line it up with this piece and this piece. And just so you're aware, it's 1.7 centimeters down. Then from there, it's another 2.7 centimeters all the way back. And then remember this bottom line goes into this groove and along the very bottom of this block. And then from here you use a set square just to draw that line down for you. And then you can just start scoring very carefully all the way along until the piece comes out. Now where you get near the end you will tend to find that it's just the corners that are left. You can normally turn your blade around the right way and then just cut into those corners to set that piece of plastic free. Because the external frame hides this cut, you do have a small amount of wiggle room in terms of if you've scored over like I have just here. So it's not the end of the world when it comes to that sort of stuff. Alternatively, you can use your blade just to scrape the plastic just to help smooth it back over, which will also do the trick. So I'm gonna go away and score this piece out so with those two pieces now cut out, I just went in with my blade just to try and clean up the edges, followed by using a file. For the next step, we put one of these to one side, so we'll carry on with the right hand piece. Then we need to get our right hand back piece. Next up is to cut out this hole that we've got here, this time on the inner piece of the track. When it comes to cutting out this one, I would do your first mark from this point here where the angle starts going up. And then you want it to be 2.5 centimeters tall. So we can just mark across here. Then using my set square, I can define that score a bit better. Then we want to measure 3.2 centimeters going backwards. Again, I'm going to use my set square for this. And then that line is now complete. So I measured 2.5 up. I can do just the same here. And then I can just draw along. So I should have a reasonably horizontal line. And then to make it easier to cut, let's just measure two millimeters away from here. And now we've got our rough guide for cutting this hole out. With the hole now cut out, the next step is to construct the inner section of the sponson. So we need the weapon mount, which is the pivoting part, which is this piece and this piece. And in terms of weapon options, you've got the heavy bolter, the heavy flamer, the multi-melter and the plasma. And we've got those same weapons just down here as well. If you want the option to run all of them, you will need to take all of them off the sprue now, as well as these two pieces. So I've now got all my completed weapons and the sponsor mount. I've taken it off the sprue, uh, cleaned up the parts and drilled out the barrels. I've also gone an extra step and magnetized them using three millimeter magnets. Now this isn't something that you have to do. If you want to do this, you just need to use two three millimeter magnets that are one millimeter in thickness for the sponsor mount itself. And for the weapons themselves, I've just used a single three millimeter magnet. Again, this is one millimeter in thickness and it just gets mounted into this little plastic section just here. With all of those parts completed, we can put the weapons to one side and we just need to concentrate on these because we can add these into the internal sponson. 
the internal body of a sponson and the top of the next two bits that we need. What I've done is I very lightly scored the lip of the top and just along here which will just help the glue stick better to the resin. So what we want to do is take our sponson and make sure that this little gap here is of top because we don't want it upside down and then we just want to place it inside the sponson with those in place. Now I just need to add on some glue to this top part and then we can just add on the top. So I just want to press down firmly but also just to make sure that the top is lined up with this edge so it's not protruding and then this one's got the glue on it already. Just do the exact same thing just make sure it's all lined up and pressed down. With these two now glued in place, the sponson should still be free to pivot around because that bit hasn't had any glue on it. The next step is to score all the way along this edge with the back of my knife, again just to allow this piece of resin to have a bit more grip when it comes to gluing the part in place. As you can see I've just lightly scored a little crosshatch design and now we can glue this piece in place. As I've already cut out the hole for the right hand track, I now need to install the right sponson, which if we just look to the side, we can see is actually this piece here and the right hand frame, which if we just look on the back, you can see that there's a tiny R just inscribed in the corner. So for this, we now need all four pieces. We've got the whole back section of the sponson, the front frame, the back of the track and the front of the track. So what I'll do is clip these two pieces together. So the next step is just to do a dry fit of everything. So we want to place this piece in the back and have it sort of lined up with the hole around about so. And then we can drop in this right hand frame, which we can just add on here. Then it's just a little bit of wiggling around the back until you've got everything in place. What you want is this little plastic frame here, just clipping over the top of the outside frame. So that's the dry fit roughly in place. It requires a little bit of work with your fingers just to get it all together. The sponson should be still free to move around and you just want to make sure that your frame will be lined up as horizontally as possible. What we need to do is now repeat those steps just using some glue. So we can put the frame to one side and we can take this back section out. What I'm going to do is just carefully apply some glue all the way around the rim of this sponson and to make sure I don't do too much so just mounting this through the rear taking it through that hole and adding it in place before that all glues in place I'm going to drop in the frame just to make sure everything is correctly lined up and then I just want to make sure that that internal frame is pressed down against that outer track piece so as this frame isn't glued in, I'm just going to take that piece off. You can see the rough alignment of that back frame. Now if I wanted to, I could have moved that back frame a bit more to the left. So that internal section would line up more with this bit here. But actually I sort of want my frame a bit more slightly further forwards. So it's not clashing with this bit of detail here. But again, it's up to you in terms of how far forwards or backwards you might want to have your internal sponson because you can jiggle it around a little bit based on your preference. So the next step is to run some glue all the way along the back of the sponson. You can see that it's quite a small lip to add some glue to. So what I'd suggest is apply your glue first to a toothpick and then from there you can apply it to the model. Now this has glue all the way along the lip so I just need to be careful that it doesn't stick to my fingers and then you can just drop it in to the frame and then you want to make sure that it is as horizontal as possible. So I'm just going to gently hold it in place for a few minutes while the glue sets. So that's now all set in place and you can see how the external frame meets with that internal frame and effectively hides that seam line really well and if we've done it all correctly your sponson should still be able to pivot around uh, to the side and to the forward firing arc. 
and what we can do is take this piece to one side because we don't need it just yet. One word of warning at this stage is that these rivets are quite fragile and if you put a lot of pressure on them you could damage the detail. Now I'm going to suggest one extra step here which you don't necessarily need to do but I think it would be wise to do and that's because when you pivot this backwards and forwards you're going to potentially be putting a lot of pressure on your sponson and what you don't want is for this back piece to pop away from your model because once your tank's built it will be really difficult to get this frame back in. Now obviously it's glued all the way along these edges and in the past when I've made this kit for myself I've just applied some extra glue all the way around and I've left it at that. This time however I'm just going to go one extra step and I'm just going to run a bead of green stuff all the way around to help fix it in place. So that's now all done. I think that will do a reasonably good job of helping secure it in place. If you don't have any green stuff, you could actually just use some off cast of sprue and just line the sprues up all the way around and glue them in place. With that complete, you can now glue in this back piece. Now with this all glued in place, I'm just going to add in some extra green stuff just to this piece here and this piece here, just so this back half can join up to this back part of the track, just so we have some extra support. So I've just gone away and added in that green stuff. As you can see, I didn't need to use a huge amount. I just wanted to get it in at these two points and make sure I tucked it around at that lip there. Now as you can see this sponson goes in quite far but it doesn't affect the rest of your build because all the other parts go around this piece ignoring this bit in the middle. With that all said this side is now all installed. You can test it out by adding in your weapons and pivot everything around back and forth. So that one is the heavy bolter and we've got the melter gun and again you can see that cable nicely clears all the frame and I can add in that plasma gun. And then lastly we've got the flamer. So that all works nicely together. With this complete we can put this to one side and work on the left hand sponson. It's going to be the exact same instructions and measurements as before. You can follow the time code to go back to those instructions and at this time just mirror the markings for when creating the hole. So that is both pieces now completed. If I bring them both in you can see how they look side by side. Both of the sponsons are able to pivot. If we just look on the back you can see how that appears. If we want we can just add in some of the gun options just to see how it will look. My personal favourite for this tank will be the heavy bolters. You can now carry on with a tank build just following the normal instructions. We've now come to the end of this video tutorial. Even though I said it from the very beginning that this is for advanced modellers only, you can see that installing them is relatively straightforward. You just have to be very careful in a few places. If you're interested in getting a set of these internal sponsors, just check the link in the description or head over to beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any queries regarding installing the sponsons, just let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to help. If you're interested in other conversion projects, painting tutorials or building guides, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification for future updates. That's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.